All right, this comes to my latest invention, the Radioian. Now, the way I invented this, I love mucking around with gadgets and so forth, and I basically got a radio and thought, oh, how great, you know, when you can muck around and go from station to station. And then I thought, well, how about if I stick eight radios together in one box and put a button on each one that turns them on and off and actually tune each one to a different radio station, then you could more or less do a symphony of the airwaves. So I came up with this. Anyone who's got potential. Here we go. And then you use it in conjunction with a loop station and I think you'd be able to go... Who runs, for example, the, the problems and the like. So the problem is getting the aerial to work in yeah. the right place. Correct. So so that grooves away. All manner of things you can do. Adding a kick. You have the basis for a piece of music already. But a litigation nightmare, I should imagine. Let me introduce you to Claude Woodward, musician, inventor and busker extraordinaire. You will often find Claude in the central business district of Melbourne along with many other buskers trying to make some extra money with their various acts. Otherwise known as a sonic manipulator, my curiosity got better of me as I wanted to know who is this man behind the space suit making these very strange sounds. Interesting gadgets. <gasps> Which one to choose? The Claudatron. This is what started the whole business. Sounds very much like a theremin at some point, but can also sound very interesting. You have basically twist for volume and pitch is continuous variable, so So you can do all sorts of things like that. Has modulation, octave transpose. Good bottom end and a bass function. Something like this. So I can put down drum and bass grooves. Watch this. Here we go. Come on. Hey. Anyway, sonic manipulating's been a kind of a really interesting thing for me. Like I've played keyboards all my life ever since the seventies and got into moogs and all the other gadgets, which is all hands-on twisting of knobs and bending sound around and doesn't have a a legacy like a violin or whatever, you just have to make it up as you go along. So I've been into that and it's just sort of evolved, you know, finding more ways to actually articulate sound while you play because I've got a very strong ethic about electronic music especially. If you want to make it sound interesting, if you want to make the sound sound interesting, they have to speak the same way a voice speaks or a violin speaks, which means you have to um, articulate the timbre of it in all sorts of different ways so that it, it gives the ear lots of different information all the time. That's what makes it kind of expressive. So I've been, you know, putting together various gadgets and devices to sort of articulate while I play kind of thing. And so basically these 
gadgets are just an extension of that. <laughs> Very cool. Lots of people love this one. This is the one that gets the most reaction of any of my gadgetry. My musical roots are sort of non-existent because I came... Basically, I, I was born in America and I came over with my family when I was four years old. So, I was basically... Um, an alien in an alien land and so I grew up in Perth very nice so Australia is more home to me than anywhere else but Australia is a bit of a bits of culture as well so I thought you know I've got nothing to hang on to in a kind of an Irish or any of that kind of thing so I've always been looking for my own sound and of course sonic manipulation is my thing so I thought okay uh, I'll sort of invent a kind of other world music if you like and you know it's worked well because I can integrate all my gadgets and so forth and when you do something that's like other world you can do what you like because nobody's supposedly ever heard it before very cool <laughs> with the transitron which basically sweeps the pitch and does the same thing as the chlorotron so you get a sound for example well why busking I ask myself that sometimes uh, it all started, we were in England, myself and my wife, and we uh, thought, oh, well, I was doing a kind of a thing with a violin player, sort of a classical jazz hybrid thing. Very cool, but didn't quite pay the bills. So we were going to relocate, and we thought, you know, back to Australia, and we looked around, and looking on the website, because we'd been, lived in Sydney for a long time, we thought we'd want to change, and lo and behold, Melbourne says... Melbourne welcomes buskers. Absolutely fantastic, but I am proud to say that I'm completely living off it without any government assistance or anything, which is fantastic. And it is, you know, there's there's really not very much scope for musicians if they're not well known to be earning a living off their craft, kind of thing. It's a weird sort of space in the music industry at the moment. Of course, DJs and all that are what are probably taking the lion's share of the gigs so actual instrument players and so forth are relegated to the sidelines so it's a little bit tricky in that department I mean that's why it's good to sort of go out there and be able to do something that's just you you don't have to rely on anybody else so the next time you go into the central business district in Melbourne be warned you might very well see a spaceman in your travels but whatever you do, don't be shy. Throw in some coins, have a chat, ask him round for dinner. Oh, and if you're a budding busker wishing to follow in his footsteps... Best advice I can give you is wear a horse suit. <laughs>